welcome back to the channel guys um, as promised I was going to be doing a fitment video of the Acropovic exhaust um, so what I'm going to try and do is a step-by-step -step guide uh, to make this as simple as possible um, I'm only going off of the basis of watching other videos so um, you know feel free to shout in the comments if uh, there's an easier way of doing this for other people um, but essentially um, I'm going to be looking to remove the fairing as the first step so we have a number of bolts uh, heads that we have to remove here here one inside here one down here one here and then internally to the uh, fairing here I'll show you on the other side you've got a couple of push fit fixings and a screw um, that will need to come out to allow this this whole side of the fairing to be removed so without further ado i will grab some tools i will make a start and uh, we'll see how we go Okay, so I have removed the fairing. Um, when you do that, just remember you will have your um, indicator connector here. So um, you won't be able to, don't just keep tugging away at it. Make sure you're um, checking each time you remove a panel, just check that there's nothing else holding it there. Um, as you can see, we've exposed uh, the exhaust. The CO2 sensor, the lander sensor is here, uh, nicely exposed now. Um, and yeah, I've only taken the one side of the fairing off. I know I have seen some videos where people have taken both sides off, um, but I didn't see that necessary. You will need to remove these push clips uh, from this center part because it's connected to both uh, fairings. So um, there's a bolt under here as well uh, that was hidden that I didn't see and a push clip here. So until I got a lot of the fairing bolts off and started removing it, I didn't see these two. So this is a five mil Allen head uh, and this is just one of the push clips. Um, these were push clips here um, and the rest of them were five mil Allen bolts. So in here, here um, and in the various parts on the fairing, which you'll probably see in the video. And these up here were three mil um, Allen heads. So, you know, I haven't used a multitude of tools here I've just kept everything um, together so we have all of the push clips here um, I've got a 17 mil spanner for the uh, co2 sensor from the lander I've just used a little um, ratchet here with an allen allen head on it with the different sizes the three and the five and then I've just kept my bolts all together so these push clips um, we see here um, there's quite a few of these actually on the bike um, to hold the fairing in place. The, the easiest way to push them out, I will do a quick video on and show you. So these push clips um, are fairly straightforward. So you, let's take the pin right out. You can push those all the way through. So effectively what you have is this, uh, let me get some focus. So this, which has four um, little sprung loaded clips with a pin that goes through the middle um, so effectively to fit these refit in them you just about push the pin through so you can still squeeze these ends put it in the hole and then when it's firmly in place just click it into position um, it's almost like a raw plug you won't be able to remove it the easiest way I found to remove these from the bike was just getting a little uh, screwdriver and all you do is just push the middle pin in just slightly enough and these will pop loose. So just push that center pin in and these will release, uh, release and then you can remove the, um, the retainers. And then obviously just make sure you're keeping them all together because uh, obviously they'll all need to go back on the bike so we don't have any flapping um, pieces of fairing. So now the uh, fairing is removed I'm just gonna crack off the CO2 lander sensor here. Um, I'm not gonna completely undo it. I'm just gonna crack it off. Um, just make life a bit easier once it's hand tight. That's it. 
So the reason I'm not removing it, um, you may be able to see the cable itself uh, will spin with the lander sensor. So I don't know if you can see the, they're quite fragile cables, but they will spin with the lander sensor. So I don't want to be doing that and twisting the cables all the way through um, because I'll only damage the cables. So I'm just going to make sure that that's loose enough. And then when I lower the exhaust, I will, um, I will then remove this completely. Header bolts, which I believe again are 12 mil, um, but I believe to gain access to that, I'm probably gonna need to uh, remove this bracket on the radiator here to allow the radiator just to lean forward so I can gain access right in there to those, uh, to those bolts. As you can see, one of them just protruding here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and uh, I'll come back. Okay, so, um, the header bolts are all removed now. Uh, let's see. Yep, so at the top there, you can see all the header bolts have been removed. Uh, you'll find that some of these um, will maybe slide down if they're loose enough. Um, that's just the uh, bracket that holds it in place. Um, I did undo this bolt uh, here at the bottom of the radiator and I did take the top one out as well um, over there but to be fair I've been restricted with movement of my radiator these are so tight that the radiator's not really moved much to give me much uh, additional room to get to the header bolt so because um, I couldn't get out of the way all I've used is a, a universal uh, joint on my socket so not sure whether it's even removing those at all, to be honest. Um, I think you could probably do it without it as long as you can get the access. You may have a bit more slack on your radiator hoses than I have. These seem to be very well fitted. And as you can see that bottom bolt, I mean, I've got a bit of movement, but nothing major. Um, so now I'm gonna undo the uh, bolts on the bracket for the back box. One is here and you have to gain access to the other one from the other side. So, yeah, we're making progress. So we're on the other side of the exhaust now. Um, the bolt that holds the exhaust on is just up there. So same 12 mil, um, nice and easy. And that should completely allow the exhaust to drop down. Um, my headers are very loose now. I've just positioned this, um, sort of a soft mat underneath. So when the exhaust does go to lower down, I'm gonna lower it nicely onto the uh, onto the soft padding here. So uh, I'm gonna just shoot around the other side, get that bolt out, and we'll have the exhaust removed in a couple of minutes. So there you have it, the exhaust is now off. And to be fair, it's, uh, it's quite a weight. Um, I know a lot of people on the videos have said it's quite heavy. I think it, yeah, probably 10, 11 kilos. It's, it's a fair weight. Certainly the new one will be a, a lot lighter, titanium. Yeah, you can see a bit of heat and uh, coloring on the exhaust here. So yeah, there we go. That's the exhaust removed. Now, for the fitment of the new one. Okay, so um, I've got all the components out of the box that I need. I've got my spring puller. I have my ratchet. I also have a torque wrench. Um, 
I believe these uh, will need to be torqued. So your uh, header header bolts will definitely need to be torqued. I think the lambda will, and the likelihood is this bracket will need to be torqued onto here. Um, I had a quick flick through the instructions. I could see um, something in 22 Newton meters. So I'll, um, all I'm gonna do is just, you know, nip them up and then I'll come back with a torque wrench. Um, one thing to note is when the headers are delivered, they have these sleeves fitted. You'll have to take them off of the um, top. They go this way around. They only go one way around. So note that this will be fitted like this. So when you remove them, make sure you place that inside there because what we do is make sure that you have the springs fitted in these tiny little holes here. And then you mount these into your headers um, before you install your exhaust. And then all it is is the spring tension that holds the spring, uh, that holds the header um, in place. So I'm gonna just go ahead, take all of these off, um, ensure I've got the springs fitted I'm gonna mount them using the existing bolts that came with the uh, with the bike into the headers. And then what I will do is I will mount the uh, bracket on top of the exhaust. And I am, the instructions say to leave this um, as it is and then just fit the headers in. But I think it's gonna be quite difficult to ensure that all four of these are perfectly lined up. So I'm going to remove uh, the springs here and remove this four to two to one section of the exhaust and just fit these in singly. And then I will mount this and then I will mount the back box to this part here um, with the bracketry. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Okay, so that part is done. Um, these are all just hand tight at the moment. I will be uh, just nipping these up and then torquing them to the correct setting. Um, but effectively, you've fitted the sleeves, the outer and these bolts just hand tight. But the most important part of this process is ensuring these springs are fitted in place before you do anything else because you will not get that spring um, through that hole once the rest of the exhaust is up so if you try and mount these afterwards stop what you're doing start again um so these springs are now in place um there is a certain order you do these so this outer the one nearest um to the exhaust side goes on the outer this two the two inner ports then have the springs near each other more to the center of the bike and then the furthest um, port away also is mounted nearer the center of the bike. So again, quite important because if you get that bit wrong and you've mounted this on the outside here, um, and then you start trying to fit your exhaust and you get them all uh, lined up and then you go, hang on, I've got nowhere to pull my springs. Um, you're effectively gonna have to start the whole process again. So very important. So this was one of the easiest tasks, but I think it's probably one of the tasks that people can um, get wrong and then you know make a fairly straightforward exhaust change um, fairly stressful so have a look in the manual it's all kind of explained in there I have pretty much had a glance at it. Um, the rest of this I've based on just uh, watching some other YouTube videos but yeah this part really important so I'm gonna go ahead now use my universal joint um, and 12 mil just nip these up um, and then I'll get my torque wrench and I will go ahead and torque those to the correct torque settings. Um, but I'll just make sure these are nipped to start with. It's quite strange. So the other exhaust was actually held on by these bolts. Um, whereas these bolts are just holding the, uh, the sleeves in place and the spring is actually what's holding the header. So slightly different setup. Um, these springs are under a hell of a lot of tension, so I imagine they're there for um, a bit of flex and as and when the exhaust warms up, uh, it will expand. So let's just make sure these are well seated. That's another point to so the inner sleeves. Um, just make sure that they're well seated. I did uh, have one that wouldn't quite sit in there and I just had to play around with it a little bit just to make sure it was seated right up against the gasket um, before I attempted then to put the 
put the bolts on and just give them a nip. So um, yeah, that's quite important as well. Certainly not overdoing these bolts, um, just giving them a, a little nip and I'll let the torque wrench do the rest. Um, So I uh, decided against removing all of these and splitting this just to try and line it up. And I thought, let me just see how far away they are from completely being lined up. Now, they weren't bang on. I did have to, um, you know, give it a bit of a tug and, and move it around gently, of course. But I managed to line all four ports up um, fairly fairly easy actually easier than i thought so i then just decided to put two springs on just to hold it in place um so i'll show you now the rest of the spring pulling um and this will give you an idea about what i just discussed so if you had put this spring on the outside and your hook is here you will be starting um to lose the plot and you would have had to remove all of this again take your header bolts back out um and basically restart that process of lining the springs up correctly. I'm just gonna show you how much tension these springs are under and why a three, that take, take some considerable, considerable strength. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, but yeah, that, that took some considerable strength but they do need to be under a lot of tension. So this is why it's so important. This spring puller, couple of pounds, well worth it. Um, I'll just show you again with this one. So this one is mounted here. Just give it a tuck. See, I'm even struggling to do that with a spring puller, so. Okay. So that's in position. So, I mean, you can see it was actually, I was pulling it so hard it was compressing the front suspension there. Um, but all four springs are in place. And I've got to say, the exhaust is very solid. Um, that's well on there. And that means now I do not have to start trying to line up this section here. Cause obviously these are now, these are welded. so it would be more difficult to try and move these and line them up with this than it is to leave this in place and try and line these four headers up with the uh, with the ports at the top there. So I think that's probably the way to go. Um, it's each to their own. I have seen people just separating these into four separate um, exhaust headers, but that seemed to work. I've got nice clearance. It's it's in a good position. So obviously I can refit my, um, my lander sensor now, which the, the port is here for that. Um, yeah, so let's go on with the next step. Okay, so I've uh, refitted the uh, CO2, the lambda sensor here. Um, as I said before, with this uh, cable twisting, I, I had unplugged it. I didn't need the extension. Um, I, I don't think it's for all models, maybe just for older models or different bikes, but I didn't need the extension. It fits, there's plenty of slack still here, um, but I did unplug it just to allow it. So as you're tightening this up and spinning it, that as the cable's spinning, you can just go to the other side and just untwist it so it's not sort of winding itself all the way through and then having lots of twisted cables. Don't want any sensor faults or anything coming up on the dash. So, um, yep, yeah, that's all done. This, um, what I did actually um, off camera was when, when I'd fitted this, these all looked really nicely seated. Um, and all I did was just grab it and give it a good wobble, each one and they just sort of took themselves home that little bit more and really seated nicely. So I'd recommend doing that, you know, just give it a, grab each one, just give it a little wiggle. And um, and yeah, they sort of find themselves home that little bit more, which is great. So last but not least, I need to mount the back box. Okay, so the back box has been fitted. Um, this bolt here um, and the other 12 mil on the other side, this one is just near your uh, rear foot brake. Um, and the other bolt on the other side 
is um, they're kind of in this rubber bung and it's slotted. So uh, it does allow some movement. I didn't have much clearance here um, before, but as you can see now, there's quite a big gap or a decent bit of clearance. So you have to sort of just make sure you're not gonna cross thread the bolts, get them started, and then you can start sort of giving this a good twist and a wiggle to, to make sure you, you've pulled it up um, tight on there. Um, obviously, you now need your springs. Um, they obviously give you springs, so I'm just gonna mount them now. Um, Give that one last wiggle. Um, so yeah, that's mounted. Now I can completely tighten up the uh, 12. So because it was still on that slotted area, I didn't want to tighten them right up until I got the springs on and everything was in place. Now I can tighten them up. Okay, so um, fairings are still not fitted on the bike. Um, I will do that in a minute, but I can't wait to hear this thing. Um, in the flesh, I've heard some videos on YouTube, but I don't know what it will sound like in real life, but now it's fitted. I don't think I'm gonna bother waiting to fit the fairings to hear it, if I'm honest. So I haven't started this up yet. This will be a cold start. Um, so yeah, let's give, give it a listen. when I say that is a massive difference. That is ridiculous. Sounds lovely. <laughs> so because these are titanium, these will start changing like a sort of a goldy, oh, they're hot already. Um, they'll start churning like a goldy color. You can kind of smell that, um, you know, the manufacturing oils and things being burnt off. So it's smelling nice and hot. Sounds unbelievable. When I first fired it up, you probably noticed there was some uh, bits of polystyrene flying out. So uh, yeah, I, I must have. I tried to remove as much as I could. There must have been some small ones in there, but they've been blown out nicely. Um, yeah, back pumps is starting to gradually warm up. Honestly, it sounds absolutely incredible. I mean, this is on tick over. You know, your 18. So once, uh, once the fans kicked in a couple of times, I'll give it a couple of revs and uh, yeah, unbelievable. Okay, so the install is complete. Fairings um, are all back on. So we're good to go. Just gonna show you the sort of um, clearance it has. So it's pretty good clearance to be honest. You know, when you sit on it, the swing arm's only gonna go up a little bit higher anyway. Um, all the springs are sitting clear not touching anywhere there on the fairing which is great um i'll fire it up uh for another cold start because obviously it's cooled down when i've done the fairing i am not being biased when i say that is one of the best sounding exhausts i've heard for a long time it sounds incredible
Woo! No excuses. Hey. I got no excuses. Yeah.